you know, all of Klai Yisrael came and dropped their 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 sadness and dropped their grief and dropped their anxiety and everything else on this man's shoulders. Here, let's just see this story just to appreciate it. Allow me to... Okay, so this is written by a guy who went and parked himself inside the houses of very many tzaddikim. And he just... That city became a piece of furniture there. And um, I, by the way, incredible. Like, like really, really... I, I wish I had these uh, like, like this guts to do it. A really incredible book. And he spent a very long time in the house of Reb Chaim Kanievsky. Allow me to describe a normal, everyday scene of Reb Chaim's home. There's 30 people waiting in the room outside. I'm standing next to Reb Chaim. I'm watching his every move. In general, when it comes to speaking with Reb Chaim, there isn't much privacy. People who come in are going to know that everybody's gone here. I've killed a man! <laughs> and he's doing, no matter what you've done in life, you know, everybody's just going to hear. We're going to get through this. So, especially today, unfortunately, it's not safe. To, I don't know. This is what he writes. When unfortunately today, it's not safe to leave a gadol unprotected. Hashem Atzil. There are always other people around. The first person comes online. He says to Reb Chaim, he says, I'm married for seven years. We still haven't had children yet. Reb Chaim says to the guy, you should do Shiluah HaKen. You should send away uh, the mother bird, the mitzvah of doing Shiluah HaKen. Okay, the guy says thank you, and he leaves. Another five people come. Everybody has their own problems, their own issues. Guy number seven comes into the room. Same heartbreaking story. He'd been married a bunch of years. He doesn't have kids. And, he's, and now the guy who's writing this said, now I'm waiting to hear Reb Chaim tell the guy, do Shiluah HaKen, because he just taught the next guy. But no, Reb Chaim says to the guy, do you do, you do have dala with wine or do you do have dala with grape juice? This is a famous one for Reb Chaim. And, and he said, I, I do have dala on grape juice. He said, from now on, you got to do it on wine. I said, okay. And then the guy leaves. Ten additional people enter. Brachot, etzot, they leave. Eleventh person comes in. Same thing. Unfortunately, I don't have children. So this guy's like, ooh, ooh, call on me. It's either Shluch HaKen or, you know, it's Havdal. It's one of the two. Reb Chaim says to the guy, are your beds situated between the north and south or between the east and west? Well, uh, he and his wife inside the, inside the room was like, I don't know. That, and they start to go through it. Among the many people who came to see him that night, five people turned out to be people who need help with children. To each, Rav Chaim gave another answer and different advice. How in the world did Rav Chaim know what each one needed? This guy, Shiluch HaKen, that guy, Avda? Nobody knows. But when the fifth man told Rav Chaim they couldn't have children, and he asked for Baracha, Reb Chaim looked him in the eye and Reb Chaim said, simply, you can daven. And the guy said, well, I mean, I know I can daven. Of course I can daven. So Reb Chaim then said to him again, no, no, seriously, you're allowed to daven. Just, just daven. The man understood that Reb Chaim was refusing to give him a biracha or an etzah, and the guy just started to cry. Why doesn't the Rav want to give me a biracha, he asked. Rav Chaim's warm gaze met the tear-filled eyes, and he said to him, the Chafetz Chaim is to say that sometimes it's better to not have kids. You don't know who their friends are going to be. You don't know if there will be good children. Sometimes a person's children aren't well, but you're allowed to daven. This is what Rav Chaim said to the guy. Five different people of, of the 30 or 40, or the, each one with different advice, and this was his every single day, where... Hashem just gave him this focus to be able to look into the soul of people and to know what it is that they need.